Hi there, I'm here with Andrew Coward of Lumina Networks. And you've been talking today about the importance of open source right. to the work that you're doing and to the future of, uh, of the network. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? And, uh, Sure. So, um, for, for, for in telecom market, you know, we, we believe that open source is a really important element in, in basically opening up these these networks, commoditizing them, and making them much easier to manage uh, and control. And if you think about um, the role in open source in in enterprise, mm -hmm. which has been Linux and a common platform, what we're looking for in telco is a common platform, a common way of controlling and managing these these networks. Or another way. Automation is absolutely critical to the rollout of 5G, to the absolutely. development of new services, mm -hmm. and the only way you're going to get that in a common way with all the plethora of different vendors that are out there is if you have a common control and management um, implementation. And the way that plays out is that needs to be open source necessarily, so all the vendors can come and actually work on a common platform. Yeah, fascinating. Uh, one of the more interesting comments that uh, you were talking about is that uh, you're crediting Oracle with uh, the proliferation of Linux, is that correct? Yeah, I think that was a pretty uh, <laughs> interesting history, really. Mm -hmm. and, and if we think about you know, who was an enabling force in the Linux days, mm -hmm. it was the fact that Oracle was ported onto Linux pretty early, um, because that meant the Oracle sales guys could go out and sell directly and say, you know, run on x86, and you don't need an IBM sales guy to help you sell a solution. So the catalyst in, in, in networking and in telco mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. that the carriers are saying, I need this to be open. Um, at and Verizon, and so on, are saying to their vendors, I will only buy from you if you work um, with common interfaces like um, open config and netcom mm -hmm. and, and open common standards like uh, mm -hmm. modeling, like Yang, and Tosca, um, open mm -hmm. and, Tosca and, and, mm -hmm. and open source projects like Open Daylight mm -hmm. uh, and Orchestration ONAP. So we've got that same kind of catalyst that switch, if you like. Uh, in, in, on the enterprise side, it was driven by a vendor getting frustrated, if you like, with, mm -hmm. with the, their route to market. Um, in telco, it's because the telcos are getting frustrated. And rightly with, so. Uh, right, with, with the lack of um, movement from, from carriers, to, sorry, from, um, from, from vendors into moving into the scenario. Oh, very interesting. Um, so do you th the role of things like ONAP and um, some of the open source yeah. Um, Open data, orchestration um, projects, uh, are they important for both the carriers and for Lumina, do you believe? Sure. Well, I, I don't think any telco would say that open source is not important to them mm -hmm. um, as a strategy going forward. For us as, as Lumina, you know, we, 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 developed open, we developed on top of Open Daylight. We provided distribution of Open Daylight, particularly because we thought that and we recognized that the SDN control of this infrastructure, not SDN control of new stuff, SDN mm -hmm. control of the existing network, mm -hmm. was, was critical to, to having automation delivered. Uh, to, to, so to the 5G journey, if you like, Mm -hmm. If we're going to multiply the number of base stations and cell sites and backhaul connections right. by a factor of 10 or a factor of 100, whatever that whatever lands that on, may be. Um, then you know, it, it's very hard to manage this today. It's impossible to manage at that scale right. unless you've got automation in place. Exactly. And it's remarkable today that you know, it still takes two months to provision connectivity um, between two locations because it's a manual process. You, you, know, you, you go to the optical network and you provision that, and when that's done, you go to the MPLS network and provision that, and the IP. That's why it takes that, that length of time. You bring an automation framework to do it, and you normalize the data the models and how every, every device needs to communicate. You're now delivering that in a 20-second automation effort. That's a vast improvement Incredible in, in improvement. impact. Yeah. impact. Yeah. So the service providers um, currently, while they say they want to be in a multi-vendor environment, sometimes they're forced into a single vendor environment merely because it's easier today to provision those networks. That's right, and that, and that, that works for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but two things damage that. One is that no one vendor has the best product in, in every space, so they might be very good at IP to have the best optical products. Mm -hmm. The optical vendors don't necessarily have great IP products in, in all cases, right? So can you really do that? And the second thing that happens is that these, these carriers tend to merge and buy acquire and do other things. So they end up with multi-vendor whether, whether they like, they it, like or it or not. Whether they like it or not, exactly. Um, do you see the requirements differing on the control plane versus the data plane? Well, the way we see things kind mm -hmm. of landing, in, again, similar to the Linux environment, the control plane ends up being open source necessarily mm -hmm. because it because it's a common platform on which every, everybody can come and play. The data plane, just like enterprise applications, can be proprietary, it could be open source. Um, and so, you know, you, you think about payroll applications, you think about open source payroll applications. Mm -hmm. 
you think about the best payroll application um, that's needed for, for the problems that you have, right? Um, and so if it's open source, that doesn't necessarily factor into the buying decision. And we believe in the data plane, the same things will play out. Does it have the right features? Does it have the right performance? And does it work on the platform of choice that I have, which is open source? Very interesting. All right, thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you.